Early 19th Century The United States was the only independent state in North America. Having gained independence from the British Empire as a result of a bloody struggle, the young state developed rapidly and tried to expand the territories under its control. In 1803, under the pressure of Napoleon, Spain transferred the ownership of Louisiana to France. In this situation, the U.S. government feared that the French would not allow them to use the port of New Orleans for export trade, as it happened earlier by agreement with Spain. In order not to be in a disadvantageous situation, the U.S. government offered France to acquire New Orleans and the surrounding territories from her. In turn, Napoleon offered the U.S. government to acquire the entire province of Louisiana, which had recently been transferred by Spain to France. The Louisiana sale was signed on April 30, 1803. The problem was that the borders of the province that France was selling to the U.S. were not clearly defined. The inability to accurately define the borders caused tensions between Spain and the United States. The border dispute was resolved only by the signing of the Florida Treaty in 1819, according to which Spain transferred Florida to the United States, and the United States renounced claims to Texas, which was formerly part of the province of Louisiana acquired from the French. In 1821, as a result of armed struggle, Mexico was able to achieve independence from Spain. In turn, the United States did not challenge Mexico's right to own Texas, but was not going to abandon plans to gain control of Texas by acquiring it or in any other way. Since the territories of Texas were sparsely populated, the Mexican government did not interfere with the resettlement of U.S. residents to this province. Since the Mexican government practically did not interfere in the process of governing Texas, the Mexican law prohibiting the use of slave labor was not in force on its territory, as well as the requirement for immigrants to adopt the Catholic faith. The situation changed in 1826, when the settlers, led by Hayden Edwards, proclaimed the Republic of Fredonia, independent from Mexico, in Texas. The Mexican government, of course, did not like such actions of the settlers. In 1827, Mexican troops crushed the resistance of the rebels, and Edwards himself fled to the United States. After the suppression of the rebellion, the Mexican government decided to restore order in Texas. By 1830, laws were passed prohibiting migration to Texas, as well as slavery in the province. By this point, the majority of the population of Texas were of U.S. descent and owned slaves. Since the people of Texas did not like the new laws, they announced their secession from Mexico. At the initial stage, the Texan rebels acted quite successfully, largely due to the fact that the hunting rifles used by the Texans were significantly superior in range and accuracy to the obsolete guns of the Mexican army. In response to the actions of the Texas rebels, Mexican dictator General Antonio López de Santa Anna personally arrived in Texas at the head of an army of 6,000 soldiers. The Mexican army was able to inflict several serious defeats on the Texans, until the Texans, having gathered their strength, as a result of a surprise attack, defeated Santa Anna's army, and he himself was taken prisoner. In 1836, the captive Santa Ana signed a treaty recognizing the independence of Texas from Mexico. In turn, the Mexican government refused to ratify this treaty, which left the political status of Texas uncertain. Having gained de facto independence from Mexico, Texas announced its intention to become part of the United States, but the United States, not wanting to spoil relations with Mexico, was in no hurry to expand its territory at the expense of Texas. In 1845, the U.S. government still passes a resolution on the annexation of Texas, after which troops are brought into Texas to protect the new border. In turn, the Mexican government expressed dissatisfaction with the inclusion of its rebellious province in the United States, but did not take any action to return the lost territories. Almost immediately after the incorporation of Texas into the United States, the question of the border with Mexico arose. The fact is that Mexico believed that the border with Texas runs along the Nueces River, while the United States believed that the new border with Mexico runs along the Rio Grande River. 
Realizing that it would most likely not be possible to resolve the border issue peacefully, the U.S. government began active preparations for the upcoming war, but at the same time it was negotiating the purchase of disputed territories from Mexico, as well as New Mexico and California. At this time, there was a period of instability in Mexico itself, since four presidents were replaced in the country in 1846 alone. In the end, the nationalist government came to power, which not only refused to negotiate the sale of any territories, but put forward claims for the return of Texas to Mexico. War was inevitable. The fighting began on March 8, 1846, when the U.S. Army crossed Texas and invaded Mexico. On March 24, without encountering serious resistance, the U.S. Army reached the banks of the Rio Grande. The Mexican government demanded the immediate withdrawal of troops from Mexican territory, in response to this, U.S. troops blockaded the Rio Grande by building a fort opposite the city of Matamoros. Realizing that American troops will not leave the disputed territories, the Mexican government declares war on the United States. On May 3, Mexican troops surrounded the fort built by the Americans and began to besiege it. American detachments under the command of General Taylor advanced to the aid of the besieged fort. Mexican detachments advanced to meet Taylor, but, having been defeated, the Mexicans were forced to lift the siege of the American fort and cross to their own bank of the Rio Grande. On May 13, the United States declares war on Mexico, after which the American army begins active operations. At the time of the start of active hostilities, the strength of the U.S. Army was 15,000 soldiers, while the strength of the Mexican Army was 19,000 soldiers. In addition to the regular army, the Mexicans also had at their disposal irregular detachments with a total strength of 10,000 people. It should be noted that the U.S. Army had more modern weapons, which allowed it to operate effectively against a numerically superior enemy. On June 14, John Fremont, who was in California with a cartographic expedition, managed to convince the American settlers to raise an uprising. The rebels captured the city of Sonoma and formed the California Battalion. At this time, the American fleet began to seize the California coast. The actions of the fleet turned out to be quite successful, and already on July 7, the Americans were able to occupy Monterey, and two days later, American troops managed to establish control over the city of San Francisco. The fleet continued successful operations and on August 13, the American landing force, which landed on the coast, captured the capital of California, the city of Los Angeles, after which the Americans also managed to occupy the ports of Santa Barbara and San Diego. Thanks to the successful actions of the American fleet, on August 17, California was included in the United States. Of course, the local population did not like this scenario, and on September 23, an uprising broke out in Los Angeles. Already on September 29, the rebels forced the American garrison to leave the city and retreat. On October 8, the American garrison of Los Angeles withdrew to San Pedro, received reinforcements and tried to recapture the lost city. The rebellious Mexicans, led by Flores, managed to repulse the American attack and maintain control over the city. Simultaneously with the fighting in California, the American army began a campaign in New Mexico. On this front, the situation is also developing in favor of the U.S. Army, which launched an offensive in July 1846 and managed to take Las Vegas on August 14. Continuing the offensive and not meeting serious resistance on August 16, the Americans occupy San Miguel, and on August 18, the city of Santa Fe passes into the hands of the U.S. Army without a fight. Thanks to a successful offensive operation, the Americans managed to occupy the entire territory of New Mexico, and on August 22 a decree was issued to include this province in the United States. Meanwhile, the uprising in California continued, thanks to which the Mexican rebels managed to establish control over almost the entire province, with the exception of a few ports that remained under the control of the U.S. Army. On December 2, General Kearney brought fresh troops into California and joined forces with American forces in the region to attack the rebel army. Despite the fact that the rebels fiercely resisted, American troops managed to occupy Los Angeles on January 10. 
Despite the occupation of the provincial capital by American troops, the Mexican uprising in California continued. On January 14, 1847, an uprising broke out in the newly incorporated New Mexico. Already on January 20, the rebellious Mexicans tried to establish control over the city of Santa Fe, but faced with the fierce resistance of the American garrison, they were forced to retreat. Meanwhile, in Texas, events were also actively developing. On May 18, 1846, American troops captured Matamoros, after which they began to move deep into Mexican territory. Having broken the resistance of a few Mexican units, the U.S. Army managed to occupy the cities of Reynosa and Camargo. Due to failures at the front in Mexico, a coup took place and the liberals came to power, who returned Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana from exile. Santa Ana, who at that moment was in exile in Cuba, immediately began secret negotiations with the American president. He promised an exchange for unhindered passage through the American naval blockade and $30 million to cede to the United States the lands they claimed. On September 14, Santa Ana returned to the capital and immediately received the post of commander of the army. He hastily began to gather forces to meet the American army advancing from Texas. The American army continued its offensive and already on November 16 managed to occupy the city of Saltillo. In late summer and early autumn, the American fleet made several attempts to capture the port of Alvarado, but all these attempts were unsuccessful. Therefore, the Americans changed the direction of the blow and attacked the port of Tampico. The port was defended by a large Mexican garrison, but when three American ships approached it, Santa Ana ordered the garrison commander to leave the city, after which he fell into the hands of the U.S. Army. At the end of January, Santa Ana gathered an army in advance to meet the advancing American army. Upon learning of the approach of Santa Ana, General Taylor decided to retreat to more advantageous positions. The battle took place at Buena Vista on February 22. The Mexican army, which had traveled about 200 miles across the waterless desert, was forced into battle without rest. A bloody battle broke out, as a result of which the Mexicans were defeated and hastily retreated. In turn, the American army continued the offensive. At this time, an uprising broke out in Mexico against the government, which decided to sell some of the church utensils in order to finance military expenses. Upon learning of this, Santa Ana, leaving a significant part of his army, hastily advanced to the capital. Arriving in the capital, Santa Ana sided with the rebels, and after the overthrow of the government, she received dictatorial powers. By this time, the American army, advancing deep into the territory of Mexico, took up defensive positions. Despite the fact that the U.S. Army occupied vast territories, the Mexicans did not plan to surrender. In this situation, the American command decides to capture the capital of Mexico in order to end the war. On March 9, 1847, the American fleet lands on the Mexican coast, three miles from the city of Veracruz. At that time, there was a relatively small, poorly armed garrison in the city. The siege of the city began, which lasted until March 29, when the garrison of Veracruz, after heavy bombardment, was forced to capitulate. After the occupation of Veracruz, the American army under the command of General Scott advanced towards Mexico City. In the Cerro Gordo Gorge, an American army of 9,000 soldiers clashed with a Mexican army of 12,000 soldiers under the command of Santa Ana. During the battle, the Mexican army was defeated, and its remnants hastily retreated. The Americans continued their advance on the Mexican capital. In turn, the Mexicans tried to stop the advancing American army, but over and over again they were defeated. On October 9, near the city of Huamadla, the Mexican army under the command of Santa Ana again tried to stop the Americans. Luck was again on the side of the American troops, and Santa Ana fled the battlefield. The U.S. Army soon occupied Mexico City. Having suffered a crushing defeat, Santa Ana resigned, and the Mexican Congress, which was supposed to decide the issue of peace, gathered in the city of Querétaro. At this time, the idea of annexing all of Mexico began to gain popularity in the United States, 
since the Mexicans simply did not have the strength to drive the U.S. Army out of Mexico City. Realizing that Mexico simply did not have the strength to resist, the Mexican Congress was forced on February 2, 1848 to sign a peace treaty. Under the terms of this treaty, Mexico recognized the transfer of Texas, California, Nevada, Utah, as well as most of Arizona and New Mexico, to the United States. In turn, the United States pledged to pay the Mexican government 15 million pesos to compensate for the damage to Mexican territory caused during the hostilities. The war is over. As a result, the United States was able to double its territory, and Mexico lost 55% of its territory. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell.